summer rock climbing on the Tibetan Plateau defies many climbers' expectations of what it's like to climb during warm weather. So we were hoping for our third day of climbing today, but it rained like crazy last night. Can I have my yogurt? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> oh, he is freezing. And there's really dark clouds in the distance. So I think we're gonna bail. The spires and high peaks of the Chinese West spend most of their time shrouded in monsoon clouds, drawing on the vast summer energy of the Indian Ocean to the south. Wow. Storm is right overhead sweep now. up into the mountains of India, Nepal, and China, making consistent climbing a hard-to-find commodity. This is uh, July, it's snowing. Uh, it's freezing rain. I am going to get further in the Hobbit hole. I am cold. So you get three days of rain, followed by maybe three days of sun. I'll be the first one getting fried when the lightning strikes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. <pee. laughs> and it was really hard to predict the weather because uh, the government shut off the data, so we didn't have very reliable weather forecasts. With a government-imposed data blackout covering most of the Tibetan mountain regions of China, weather forecasts were left to the climbing gods and a little bit of luck. Part of the game, really a huge part of the game of climbing in China and the Alpine, is waiting for weather windows to climb. Uh, and waiting? Uh, it snowed in July. And waiting and waiting some more. And then you get a day and you get stormed off the mountain. And then you wait some more. Back in base camp. It's getting ugly again. I love it. This is beautiful. We used, we used our good weather window. And so now we're just marching. Running back. Running back. Running. But all the waiting does drive you a little bit insane. Uh, you kind of have a cabin fever, shut-in sort of effect. I remember a time it, it drove me a little bit uh, insane, a little bit off the edge. Uh, and Nico and I had a bit of a run-in. Fuck your mother! <laughs> <laughs> On this day in Gonza, we showed up at the cliff, ready to climb. We are the machine. And uh, we came upon was a landscape of snow. We're all going a little crazy here. And we're all disappointed. I hop out of the van and attacked Nico with a flying Bruce Lee bicycle kick. Yeah! <laughs> uh, he retaliated a flying shoot in the face. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? That's not really nice. Climbing destinations on the Tibetan Plateau are often remote and up in the clouds. <laughs> yes. Giving you the sense that you really are in a distant land. This guy. That is great. And sometimes not even within the borders of China. One of our first climbing destinations was the uh, high country of Southwest Sichuan. This uh, easy to access area, uh, high altitude, and has seen some bouldering development, but has been largely missed by rope climbing. After acclimatizing under the clouds of Haidzushan, <laughs> onion and garlic, so and rubachaka. The team then ventured higher to some rock ridgelines northwest of the Genyan Massif, a complex rocky ridgeline formation known as Tuarshan, or Rabbit Mountain. Uh, we all found it pretty, to be pretty amazing with the easy access uh, next to the road, as well as the visibility that we were the first rock climbers to go there. The approach is real short, and within an hour or two, you have a lot of uh, climbing opportunities. You've got super cruiser, classic, multi-pitch lines. Um, you've also got really hard single pitch lines. And plenty of opportunities for goofing around. Put up a new route to our Sean. Yeah. Xi Jinping's fake snow machine. Goes all the way down that corner. Waha! And with this much granite and so many unclimbed lines, you always have a recipe for lots of fun. <laughs> oh, I love it. Do it, say.
Ne, 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 ne. Here comes Raul to save us. I should know better to come up on this outing with these two crazy fuckers. <laughs> I go up three meters and I went down four. Further in. And this this crack is keep going like you get, you you go down there, you're not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> With 10 brand new routes established on the cliffs, the team sought to link two of them through unusual means, highlining between the two iconic monoliths of the rabbit ears. So Raul and Nico put it up and had the first go at it, and I was watching them take a few falls on the high line and kind of debating internally whether or not to do it. Uh, climbing the rabbit ear and walking the line wasn't enough. We also had the, a big storm system moving in. So in the end, I decided, yeah, I was gonna do it. I was gonna walk the line. All right, so this is the leash. Decisions to walk the line had to be made quickly. So we're hanging out on top of the ridge by the bunny ears and we can see the sky start to darken and darken. We got lightning striking. It's the apocalypse behind them. And we hear thunder and lightning, and suddenly we're in the midst of this massive storm. Go off the summit. Storm is right overhead now. Dobie's hair is actually standing on edge right now. Is it sticking up? <laughs> Nuts. We're in the wrong place right now. <laughs> okay, guys, here we are. On the fart cave. On the fart cave. <laughs> that is that. Going to retrieve it. Going to retrieve the slack land down for the storm. And just realize you're like the highest thing up for like miles around. And uh, you just think, man, this is like. This is either gonna kill me or it's like the shit I'm gonna be talking about like 20 years from Survived now. Survived the storm. Some huge lightning bolt. You see that? Yeah. That was stuck in like purple. I'm either gonna end up in like a real rock video or I'm gonna end up in the jackass video. This is crazy. It took two, Raul and Nico, to get the slack line down from the ears. Raul getting electrocuted on the top. <laughs> is your hair standing up underneath the hood? Mine, I don't know, I was wearing a toque, but the toque is like <laughs> vibrating. <laughs> but Mike's hair was like... <laughs> oh, my, and my eyelashes were awesome. like... <laughs> <laughs> and all my, all my clothes like sound on the, on the top of the spider, like... <laughs> was a bit... It was a bit scary. scary. Yeah, <laughs> definitely scary. If Raul would say it was scary... Then you know. It's because it's well. <laughs> the vibrating tukes. One more time, we bail. One more time. Oh yeah. To keep climbing in the Chinese summer alpine. Caught in a bit of a hailstorm. You have to chase where the weather's good. We have a very inventive drying rack. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. 
and that target would take the team further west to the border of Tibet to find unclimbed granite spires in the Sha Tsai Massif. And with any luck, break the spell of not climbing imposed by the monsoon.